name is Sean Davis and I'm going to show you the equipment we use to transfer stereo analog tapes onto analog LPs. Autophon and Lyrec combined during the 50s and 60s to make an extremely advanced recording machine. This particular one was made in 1965. As far as I know, it is the only all-valve system in Britain, where everything from the tape to the cutter head is valves. One of the specialities of this machine is how to pack the greatest playing time on with the least distortion. To do this, it uses automatic groove control, and that means that you've got to read the tape with couple of extra heads before the audio head. On this deck we've got two preview heads followed by the audio head. Having got the signal off the audio playback head it goes into two of these preamplifiers. The preview heads go into the other two and then they all go through just about enough equalization that you can raise or lower treble or bass with different curve shapes. We now go to the cutting amplifiers, for which we have to move the console out a bit. This is one of the cutting amplifiers. Now it's rather important for me and anybody else working on this to take note of the fact that those two output valves have an anode voltage of 1000 volts. So you really have to be careful where you put your fingers. This is a brass turntable. It's beautifully balanced. It's a vacuum turntable so that the disc is held onto the turntable by this vacuum which comes down there and the suction is applied through the rings in the turntable. The cutter head is mounted on this carriage. As soon as you move it from the parked position the vacuum is switched on and the groove pitch motors are switched on as well. These meters indicate the heat applied to the cutting stylus, the depth of the groove, in fact the width across the top, and the pitch of the grooves. We can adjust the basic pitch and then the music controls how much space is needed. One of the nice things about it is that if you increase the depth, the pitch opens up to follow. These panels, here, here and here, contain the electronics, again all valve, for controlling the depth and the pitch and the lead in and lead out functions. Again, everything's automated. The microscope, made in Switzerland by a company called Wilt, W-A-L-D, is extremely high precision. It has a sliding mask so that you can look at one side of the groove or the other. Very useful. These machines, when new, cost as much as a really good house. Uh, when I started at IBC Studios in London in 1958, I was cutting on a similar machine and they just spent £12,000 on that, which in 1958 could get you a very, very nice place indeed. It took two years of work between myself and Duncan Crimmins of Audio Related Technology to recondition this machine to a really good working state like it is now. There's been a lot of um, reconditioning of the metalwork. In many cases, the company that uh, was going to repaint the panel sim said simply, it's cheaper and easier to make new panels. I don't think any machine would have been usable from this date, given the bad storage this has had, except that all the components were of such high quality. When this machine arrived in the UK, there was no documentation with it at all. Now it's extremely complex inside, and frankly, I wouldn't have begun the reconditioning of this unless I had documentation. Luckily, I never throw any circuit diagrams or instructions away. 
And when I was in Moscow some few years back, I got a whole load of information because all the Soviet bloc bought these machines and they had additional documentation and spare parts in Moscow. One of the first jobs we've been doing on this machine is transferring classic LP recordings for reissue. This one's from Paris. Other ones we've had are from London, Abbey Road. These are licenses from EMI Classics. Now, what's the playing time? 18 minutes, four seconds. Okay. We can set the groove, pitch and depth. So basic, I think I'll go for 70 microns. Groove width or depth. And we'll go for about 260 basic pitch. So we'll try a test cut. It's a stereo cutting system, which means, of course, that you've got stereo audio path, a stereo cutting head, two channels, and stereo cutting amps. The two cutting amplifiers are completely separate, so it's the ideal for a stereo system where you don't share any power lines. OK, now we're going to do the master cut. And we start before the 12 inch diameter, we lower the head and we press the lead in button and all the functions on the machine will now transfer automatically. Tape will start and the cutter on button lights come on. The monitor button goes from monitor tape to monitor feedback and we're now hearing feedback from the cutting head of the music that's being cut. And there, Mr. Kogan is ready for the factory. 